gratitude and I appreciate you all for being here. Welcome to today's episode of Back to the Basics of Health and Wellness Podcast with your host, Jaquel Wimbush. And today I will be speaking with Miss Nia Jarrett of SIP, S-I-P, sit, inhale, pause. Let it be easy. Let's get right into it. Empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend, Bruce Lee. Danny, it's time to start your podcast. Hey, Nia, how are you doing today? Good morning, Jekyll. I'm doing great. How are you? All is well. All is well on this side. It's the afternoon over here. Uh, We are on two different coasts. You're on the West Coast. I am central here in Texas, and we are getting this podcast underway. We're going to be talking about some meditation and some uh, good techniques as you are a certified meditation instructor and vitality and wellness expert, right? Correct. Yes. Let's go into it. So, um, what got you into it? You know, life. So I have meditated for years since I was a teenager. Um, I remember reading Dr. Wild's books back Mm -hmm. in the day and learning about meditation and those things. And so I would just meditate with myself because, um, I had, um, I had things in life that I needed to be able to go inside for, you know, yeah. and, and to find that, that safe place within me because the places outside of me weren't always safe. Um, and so I, I would just meditate and I would sit and I would imagine a light around me and protect me and I would breathe in a smile, you know, to go through my day and, and those types of things. And I kind of had this no matter what attitude. And so um, I meditated for years that way and it was just fine. I would just sit and imagine light and do it. And, um, in 2008 or nine, I would say my grandmother started to suffer these mini strokes and, um, I noticed her handwriting changing. We were very close and I was like, huh? So I, I I stopped working for a while and stayed home and to take care of her and move her in with us. Mm -hmm. And, um, she ended up passing away a couple of years later and I just had this moment to sit and say, gosh, what do I want to do? You know, with my life. Wow. And it had been living in Deepak Chopra for years. So I went to San Diego to Carlsbad and I went to the Chopra Center and I did their bunch of, you know, their perfect health program and journey into wellness and journey into healing. And through that, I became a primordial sound meditation instructor through um, the Chopra Center. So that's when I got a little more formal. But my thing is, um, letting meditation and life just be easy, you know? And so there's so many, you know, st- you know, transcendental meditation, so many paths and styles and those types of things. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is doing the meditation. Absolutely. And so, um, I began, I came up with this acronym one time I was, I was, um, teaching some ladies, um, for my aunt, she was doing a vision board workshop. And actually years before that, I had come up with an acronym called SIP. Like take a sip, you know, um, it's like when you want to savor something, you don't want to guzzle it, right? You want to slow down, smell it, take a little sip. <laughs> and so my acronym for learning how to meditate, um, is sit, inhale and pause. Oh, nice. Right. And uh, no matter what style of meditation, no matter if you're serious, you know, meditator or beginning, or no matter what you do, regardless of the form, the style, the depth, you have to sit down. Mm-hmm. You have to follow your breath, and you have to pause and take that time. So I thought it was a great um, way to have, you know, a foundation for beginner, advanced meditators. Beautiful, beautiful. 
And, and when you say uh, when, when your grandmother passed away, peace be on her soul, uh, when she passed away, um, did you get anything from her in the ancestor realm to put you in this position to start meditating or like because I heard you say, um, you know, after your grandmother passed and then you paused. So I just wanted to make I wanted to see if your grandmother had anything to do with you going into this journey. No, no, um, because, I, you know, I was already an adult at this time. And, and I mean, in a sense that our relationship was so fantastic and significant, her and I, and she had always been a light in my life through mm -hmm. the different experiences that I had growing up. Um, but no, I mean, I had meditated for years prior to that. But what I will tell you is when I helped navigate, um, so she passed away and the next year my mom passed away, like within four months from cancer. And, um, I, when I look at that, I often ask myself, how would I have navigated and handled that situation without meditation? And I'm not saying meditation is this end all be all miracle. And I think people look at it as such, like I'm going to sit and meditate. I'm going to levitate. All my problems go away. That's not it. Right. What happens is your presence, your ability to choose, um, navigate and um, witness and be present in all the things that are happening in life, to me, expand um, the ability to, you know, kind of touch those things and, and really feel settled and com comfortable in, in those transitions. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel with help by the meditation practice. And I, I would ask myself, wow, I wonder how this... I would have experienced this without this tool that I use daily. Um, and I don't know what that answer is, but I definitely know that um, I'm able to show up fully. I feel that I'm able to um, navigate and support myself and those around me and, and get through the situations because, you know, I do take the time daily to sit and meditate and, and really touch me. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and a lot of people need to, just look at meditation as a form of help. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people who are into different religions say, oh, you know, I can't meditate or I can't do this. I'm like, but you do. <laughs> and you don't even know that you're doing it sometimes with just breathing uh, and, and just and sometimes when people um, they just stare out and, and uh, uh, daydream that's a form of meditation and a lot of people just don't realize it and in segueing into that what are like some different types of meditation techniques that are out there and what which one do you uh do on a daily basis well there's there's several and um I, I love what you said because these are real conversations and barriers and um you know, I've done some work in, in, in um, lowering barriers to meditation, and religion is a big one. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went to the Chopra Center, you know, you're going to see things that are maybe see more Hindu or those types of things that can be intimidating. And there are people who are Christian and Muslim and different ones that talked about that. And meditation is not a religion, right? But it can be a religious practice. It can expand and help take you deeper. Mm -hmm. Um and there are all lots of different forms. I will answer that question. But um, Thich Nhat Hanh is a Buddhist monk that worked with uh, Martin Luther King and um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Mother Teresa and all these things. And he was an activist during the Vietnam War. Um, and he was exiled to France. My point with this is he talked about how um, with meditation and when we touch our truth, and we touch our essence deeper, and that's what I feel it helps do, you're really able to experience what, you know, Jesus was here to bring us, what Buddha was here to bring us, mm -hmm. like what people go to religion for. Mm -hmm. And um, and he talked about how he was a Buddhist, but he said he touched Jesus Christ through, you know, dealing, you know, his works that he did because, you know, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was so in who he was and the work that Mother Teresa did. And it was really beautiful. Yes. And so I think we get really caught up in religion and we get really caught up in spirituality mm -hmm. and we get really caught up in the ego. And so diminishing that ego and realizing that we are all on a spiritual journey, whether conscious or unconscious, mm -hmm. right? Whether Buddhist or Muslim or 
agnostic, whatever we are, when we can dissolve and bring that ego down, we can sit and say, we're all on a spiritual journey. Yes. Right? Whether I'm stripping, <laughs> right? <laughs> or I'm a, a, a nun or, or, or a monk. It, it's all a spiritual journey. Absolutely. It's Are you conscious to what you're doing? You know, because I've had times where I've been in, a, in church and they're very unconscious people or not showing up or living or practicing as Buddha may have you or Christ may have you or Muhammad may have you, whatever your, your choice is. So meditation is not a religion. It, it's a, it's a practice that you can do to help with all that ego really touch your soul and that truth and that love mm -hmm. and that light and that spirit that lives in all of us. Like, I always say that, um, you know, in yoga, people say namaste or whatever, or uh, we talk about the Christ light being in us or these different things. Um, when we really touch humanity and love and humility, it's that respect that whether you're whatever it is you do that people judge people for doing or whether you're a saint that people put you on a pedestal, we all have that light within us. Mm -hmm. It's all working in us, through us, and in our lives. And for me, touching that through meditation is what's important. And then you get to dissolve all these external layers and these things and these roles and these images and begin to touch love, light, purity. And my hope is that then we come out in this world and I can look into your eyes and you can look into my eyes and say, you know what, this is a human being, this is a soul. Mm -hmm. And there's a mutual love and light here, right? And, and we can and we can start having more grace, and we can start having more uh, humanity. <laughs> um, so I think I answered your question. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I think that um, meditation truly can deepen religion for people who are religious. But the, the real hope is that we dissolve these um, illusions between us and um, are able to have more love, compassion, and care for each other. Beautiful, beautiful. In the, in the time that we are in right now, uh, why does, I don't know if you can answer this, but why does negative like overshine positive in, in, in today's world? Well, I always say, I'll give you my two cents and you can keep the change. I mean, change right? <laughs> so from my perspective and, and, and what I see and where I sit is it's almost like a comfortability, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, we live in this society where it's a little more, it's like a muscle, like a habit. Mm -hmm. So where we find a, a little more comfortability in negativity, right? So I'll ask you how you do and I can't explain like, Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, there's a book I read years ago that I love. It's, it's challenging to find, but it, I think it's on Amazon, but it's called nonviolent communication. Mm -hmm. And I just love it. I read it years and years ago. And this morning I was like, I need to read that again. Right. I need to up my, up, up it a little bit, mm -hmm. but, um, I just think it's a comfort that we find. It's also, um, I believe, we as a society are learning to find comfort in our power, in our light, in our positivity, right? So it's easier to, uh, you know, I can't complain or um, it's familiar. Negativity is familiar. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that as we touch ourselves, you know, deep meditation, find that more peace, we can become a little more comfortable with positivity. So in a moment, I always say for me, meditation expands my space from like stimulus and response and my awareness. So um, if you ask me something like, oh, what do you want for dinner? Right. Mm -hmm. I can simply easily say, I don't know or whatever. Absolutely. I don't care. Yeah. And that's a possibility. But in that same question, there's also the possibility that I can pause and breathe and go, wait, no, I do know. Um, I would like this, like every moment, every choice, every decision, every encounter, there are a multitude of options, responses, right? And it, it, it's what we want to choose. Absolutely. So um, I practice, if someone asks me something, I try to say what I want, what I like, what I desire. Because it's much easier for us to access what I don't like. Like, oh, I don't like those shoes. Or no, I don't like that, right? But I, in that same moment, I can go, all right, I can recognize that. But I can tell you what I do like, what I do want, right? Um, like, if you come to me with something, like an issue 
or I'm upset or frustrated about something, I can come to you and voice my problem or my concern. But it's much better if I can come to you and I've taken some time to sit with me and say, you know, this I didn't like, point that out, we're done. But this is what I need. This is what I would like. This is what, right? Absolutely. So having access more to it and, 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 and just recognizing, like, this is something I'm used to, but I could do something different. So that's that's kind of my take on it. All right, cool, cool, cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, because I, I, you know, uh, as a, a wellness coach, uh, in in helping people get their lives back in order, you know, I, I always come with, uh, well, I always get like negative coming at me like you know when when i try to go out there and help or not even try when i go out there and uh and help people with you know changing their lifestyle it's like you know you always get the i'm gonna die anyway you know Mm -hmm. um and i'm like well you don't want to die in pain (laughs) yeah yeah you want to die you know peacefully you don't want to die in pain and it's like why do we you know, go so negative on when someone's trying to help, but then, you know, on the same thing, same token, you have people who post things like, oh man, I wish I can feel better. But then when someone offers to help you feel better, it's like you come with a negative response. So that's where I was coming from with that question uh, as far as um, why is negative like outshining the positive in today's world. So, but thank you for answering Yeah, I that. appreciate that. It's interesting. I was having a conversation with a client this morning and we were talking about that. And, um, you know, she struggled with weight and wanting to get, had some surgeries when I get another one. And my, my simple answer is it just, it, you just begin with love and self love and not the whole, like mm-hmm. I'm going to do me for everybody. Self love. It's not that mm-hmm. it's a deep self love, right? Yeah. Loving every, loving every bit of you. Like when I love every bit of me, it's easier for me to love every bit of you. Right. So even loving the things that we don't necessarily like about ourselves, you know, like, mm-hmm. Oh gosh, you know, but when we really, and, and just talking about stuff is, is fine, right? Because we're planting seeds, yeah. right? We're germinating. We're getting to it. The fact that we're talking about that. But when you really, really start to sprout love and really, really experience what it's like to love yourself deeply, you naturally begin to nourish yourself better, move yes. your body better, yes. more conscious of your thoughts, right? And when we do that, it makes us be able to do the same in those, right? That the compassion and tolerance and care I have for myself, mm-hmm. I can still up to that next person. Um, and the whole thing about that, we're going to die anyway. I do hear that. Um, yeah, none of us are getting out of here alive, but it's like, how do you want to live? Yes. Um, and that's also like death of relationships. I, I had a friend who was really upset because a relationship had ended. And um, this person was saying like, oh, it's just a waste of my time. And, it was so horrible. It, you know, I can't believe it's over. And I was like, why don't you consider that the relationship was what it was? Mm-hmm. And those, that time frame that it was good, it was good. And it doesn't take anything away, you know? And now it's time to do something different, right? But it doesn't mean that that whole relationship was nothing. Or, you know, just because we're going to die someday doesn't mean that we don't get to, we don't want to live this life feeling good and energized and, able to have activities and do the things we want to do. And so, again, I think it's just a comfort level thing and, 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 and a mindset. And it, it's no judgment. It's just simply like an observation. Like, oh, man, that's, that's an interesting way. You know, let me, let me look at it that way and, and see how I might want to adjust. And, um, you know, and, and this person, you know, was like, yeah, that's a, that's a really good way of looking at it. Like we, and that's another thing about meditation is letting go of attachment mm-hmm. and permanence, right? We want everything to be permanent and never change. And, you know, things are ebbing and flowing and um, things, things, things are changing. And um, we're all going to take that last breath. Absolutely. We're all going to hold the hand of that loved one that's going to do the same. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it's just enjoying the journey, enjoying the moment. And so meditation, you know, being able to sit in that space for me helps to um, when I'm projecting or when I'm looking ahead or looking back, I can like, oh, wait, hold on. Let me breathe. Let me be here. Let me really feel in Mm -hmm. to this moment here. Let me feel this breeze on my skin. Let me 
or whatever. Let me feel this pain in my heart. That's what's real for me right now, right? It's not all, it doesn't always have to be roses and candy, you know, like when, you know, when um, I was holding my mom's hand and she took her last breath, I mean, I cried for three days. Like I, I couldn't eat. The tears wouldn't, I, I wasn't even crying. Like tears just wouldn't stop streaming. Yeah. And um, I didn't try to like, you know, I still do my meditations and I'm crying and I'm hurt and I can't eat, but I didn't try like, ah, you know, it was like, this is what, this is my grieving period. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm going to be deep in it and I'm going to feel every bit of it. Right. Cause what's real for me right now. So sometimes people think the meditation, this is a fake phony positivity. And it's not about being positive all the time, mm-hmm. but it's about being real, being present, having grace and love for yourself, what's going on. And when these hard moments soften, when these things pass, breathe and be here and see what's happening now. This baby smiling. This man is holding you. Absolutely. This food tastes good. Mm-hmm. Right here, right now. Being present. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah, like a friend all she always tells me, you know, uh it, it's a reason season or a lifetime, you know, uh, for relationships, for, uh, you know, any type of relationship out there, you know, uh, getting back to when you was talking about your friend, um, yes. not being in the, in, in that relationship anymore, but you know, it's, it's it, it, that's how it, that's how it is, man. And a lot of people think just because, you know, you, you are with someone, you're going to be with that person forever, but we have to understand that, you know, the universe, God has, other things for us and we meet people we're on a journey at the end of the day and you know during this journey you're going to meet people you might stay with Mm -hmm. them for a while you may stay for them with a day but you know it's a journey and we all have to live that journey and honor that journey at the same time yeah Yeah, and find appreciation for it and Mm -hmm. cry your tears too you Mm -hmm. know like um but it it's really like finding that appreciation and and being in that present moment like feel that hug, smell that, whatever, yes. you know? And I was like, it's like if, if I offered you a trip to France for a month and you have to come back home, you're not going to go because, you know, you no, know, I'm going to go to France and yes. I'm going to freaking eat the bread. And, you know? and enjoy it. Take it all in. <laughs> really, really enjoy it. And who knows when you really deepen and really enjoy that experience, the one, it's going to be with you for a lifetime. But you're, you're giving the best, you know? And if whatever that experience, that relationship, that whatever have to not be in your experience as much mm-hmm. sending it as much gratitude and appreciation and seeing like enjoying what it gave what it served you know and then being here and being present because something else is here like offering itself to you and you may not see it right um, but at the same time being real like if the relationship ends and it hurts shed your tears you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. um, feel your pain like um, there's this woman that I follow. She's a grief specialist. And she says to get better, to feel better, we have to get better at feeling. Yes. And so even on these spiritual journeys in this path and even me with meditation, um, people think, I mean, I'm generally a happy person. I've just always been that way. It's just my nature, the way I was, it's a gift. Um, I, it's just how I am, but it doesn't, I have my moments, mm-hmm. you know, I definitely cry. I get down, but when you need those moments. You just have to be in those moments. Absolutely. Feel your pain. Feel your sorrow. You know, it's like we're all going to have pain in our life, but suffering's optional. You don't have to suffer. It doesn't have to linger. It doesn't have to, you know, we're crying about the thing from five years ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's not there. <laughs> you know, it's not there anymore. We're right here, right now. Mm-hmm. Being a present. Uh, mm-hmm. With, with meditation, like uh, for someone who's getting into meditation or listen to this program, be like, oh, you know what? I, I may want to meditate, but what is a good time to meditate? Like where, what, what, what's that sweet spot for you? So when you're just beginning out, um, I learned this at the Chopra Center. It's so funny. Um, a, a man by the name of David G. He had an acronym called RPM, mm-hmm. Rise P. Meditate. Nice. Okay. So first thing in the morning. So get up, you know, rinse your face with some cool water, go pee, whatever you have to do, and meditate in the morning, right when you wake up. Yes. One, your um everything like all oh, everything a little bit down. You know, you just came out of dream state, mm-hmm. you know, your spirit's a little more settled. 
um, everything hasn't got going, you know, so you just do it right in the morning, like a foundation, like brushing your teeth. And that's the best way that I believe for beginners, Mm -hmm. rise, tea, meditate. And, um, you could set a little timer, um, and, and just sit and do it. And you want to just leave in meditation, meditation, not analyze it, not think about it. This is your time. I I can't wait to pause, but to sit, inhale, pause. Mm -hmm. This is your time to pause everything. Goals, doing, assessing, like the meditation's in meditation. That's it. Mm -hmm. Get up, leave, you're done. It's not a good one. It's not a bad one. It's not, it's, it's, it's just the meditation. Like you don't think, oh, that was a good tooth brushing, you know, (laughs) like you brush your teeth. It is a daily practice. It is, it is, you know, touching your soul and I, I'm a, I'm a scientist, so I, I'm a, I'm a um, physician associate. I'm a PA by trade, and I'm a science geek. So there's phenomenal research that I'm actually working on right now okay. of plas- neuroplastic changes in the brain from regular meditation. And they did some studies where they looked at, like, people just doing just mindfulness or yoga or just that, and, like, meditation, different forms actually change the brain like yes. the mat the white matter the myelination of nerves and there are a lot of um radiological studies because they're having a great time looking at the brain tissue with different mri and ct scans but actually seeing the increases um in areas of the brain associated with like um <clears throat> like um self-assurance and self-reliance and decreases in areas of like anxiety and things like that mm-hmm. um Oh, yeah, I mean, and it's beautiful because it sounds like this really woo-woo, ethereal practice, which is fine. It can be that. But for people who are pragmatic, which I'm very spiritual, but I'm also very pragmatic. I have a scientific brain. Mm-hmm. Um, this stuff excites me because people who maybe not even believe in a higher power or God or universe, um, what people choose to call that power, mm-hmm. um, can look at these tangible, um, measurable changes in areas of the brain um, associated with all these different things. And so um, hopefully by next year, I'll have some papers written on some of it. <laughs> um, I'm taking my time with it, but it's, yeah, it, it's, it's real. And you mentioned about forms. Um, I, I like um, for beginners just following the breath or a simple so ha mantra, like breathing in, saying so and hum on the way out. Mm-hmm. Um, mantra base is fine. Um, following the breath is fine. Um, the, the most important thing is just really sitting and doing it. Um, having an erect spine is very important, not laying down. I know a lot of people are doing a yoga, yoga nidra practice right now where you lay down that spine. That's um, a little different mm-hmm. process. Um, so, yeah. Good, 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 good. And what sort of uh, techniques are helping? Because a lot of people say, you know, I can't meditate. Even even with my practice, I uh, try to get my clients to meditate. And because they, they'll say, oh, I can't sleep or I can't stay asleep and things of that nature. Uh, so I'll say, you know, just try to meditate. And then, you know, once they get into it, they'll say, oh, um, you know, I, I, I have distractions or my mind keeps racing or uh, I keep thinking about stuff. What, what What's mm-hmm. your take and, and what some advice can you give to that person who says, you know, they can't cut through the distractions? Yeah, I love that question. And I get it all the time. And uh, um, I talk about this on my Instagram. It you just let it be easy and, and you are doing it right, right? Mm-hmm. So you know you're meditating right when you sit down and meditate. That's yes. it, that's all. It's that simple. So if you're sitting, if you're having thoughts, right? If you're following your breath, repeating the mantra, mm-hmm. falling asleep or slipping into stillness or nothingness, you know you're meditating right. Absolutely. It's all part of the meditation. And I think when people say they can't meditate with their it's their expectation. Mm-hmm. They have an expectation that they're going to sit down, that their mind's going to be silent and shut off, and that they're going to levitate and it's going to be big. And that's not it. The meditation is all of it. It's the racing thought. It you'll, you'll slip into you know nothingness and you don't even know it, right? Um, you it. might pass up, you know, fall asleep a little bit, right? Um, and so I let people know that that's how you know you're doing it right. Yes. Um, especially if you're having thoughts, because they're not gonna they're not gonna stop. And what a tip is 
is just to witness it, right? Just witness it. I I have times where most of the time, I, you know, I, I just witness them and let them pass, but I'll have a thought that's like really, really persistent. It's like, dah, 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 you know, and I just look at it and I say, I see you and I hear you and I'll deal with you after that. <laughs> like just acknowledge it. Absolutely. I won't forget you. Right. And some thoughts just come and go. Um, yeah. I mean, and, and nobody, I mean, I've, I've literally meditated with Deepak Chopra nice. and um, David Simon and, and some others and, same thing like their minds are racing too like every Everybody. single one yeah <laughs> nobody is sitting it might look like it right and and it's, it's beautiful it's a part of acceptance because what happens is you come out in life and stuff's going to be happening so mm-hmm. images are coming at us so fast words and people and lights and all this stuff so with the meditation you learn to find that stillness and calm while everything's happening and you're like, you know, your response to me time increases. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it just really helps you in your day-to-day life. And, and, and that thing is where you can just kind of, that's, that's peace, mm-hmm. right? Peace isn't putting in headphones and shutting everything out in su- total silence and nothing bothering you and no stimulus. That's not living in life. Peace is being in the midst of everything and still being able to touch your stillness within and respond with your environment the way you choose. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Not just how you think you should or what I don't think you should. So that that's peace. You know, that's what that's what we're doing here. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're here to live. <laughs> mm-hmm. And practice. We're here to live. And, and it takes time, you know, uh, day day after day yeah. and then you'll get better with it. But, you know, it's, it's still going to show up at some point and you guys just have to deal with it and, and work through it. I'd like to challenge you there a little bit. What's up? There's no getting better at it. There's no getting better at it. It's good, right? It's easy. It's good. It's right. It's enough. Every single time when you yes. sit to meditate, you're right. It's, it's perfect. Absolutely. It's you are perfect. Right. You don't have to ever get better at it. You just got to sit there and do it. You, you're doing it perfect just as you are in each moment. And some meditations will feel longer. Some will feel juicy. Some will feel annoying. But that one is just that one, and it's perfect, and you're doing it right. There's no getting better. Beautiful. I love it. Thank you. I I love that. I receive it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Is there a type of person who needs meditation uh, the most? Yes. Okay. The busiest. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) The busiest. Yes. The busiest person. The person has absolutely no time that they need it the most. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the time. busiest, busiest person. Yeah, good, and that's me sometimes, most of the time, and and, and that's when <laughs> I have to just, I have to just sit, and um, sometimes I sit at my altar and light my candle and light my incense and go in, and I'm like, you know what, and, and you know what, meditation calls me sometimes, and it says, all right, sit down, take I'm take a, take a load off, you know, and I accept it and I receive it and I do it. And and it just when when I finish, it's like that energy just comes and it's like I'm I'm back alive again. Yeah. So I like. Do you that. set a time? Do you set a timer? Do you let your spirit guide you? Or how do you do that um, for your meditation time? Sometimes I will like at night. I would listen to a nighttime meditation, and, and you know it may be for three hours, and I'll just. Uh, turn my um, turn my Bluetooth uh, off and turn my Wi-Fi off, and I'll just let it play mm-hmm. next to my head, and then I'll just drift off to sleep. And then in the morning when I wake up, it's off. Um, I you love know, it. yeah, I'll, I'll meditate on my way to work. I'll meditate. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll do the, the meditation. Uh, uh, I do insight timers sometimes and I do YouTube uh, just for like guided meditations. And sometimes yes. like uh, taking a bus uh, from the parking lot to work, I'll just throw my headphones on and just meditate in the bus for like 10 minutes and, and just go. From yes. there. Yeah. So it's like a, just a, a, a habit and a constant thing that I have to do. Um, you know, I work early in the morning and I start at 430. So sometimes when I get a break, I like to go on the opposite side of the airport um, and meditate while the sun is rising. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and it's like I just catch these per- these these excellent moments of meditation, and it just it just works for me, and I love it. 
I love it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So God, it's wonderful. Yep. So if anybody out there who who needs to meditate, just just jump on in. That's the that's the best advice. Just jump in and get it done and feel good uh, and, and feeling that safe. Take a sip. <laughs> yeah, take a sip. Take a and, sip. And what does sip mean again? Sit, inhale, and pause. There you go. Sip, sip, sip. Sit, inhale, and pause. And Nia, how can um, do you have any classes going on right now or in the future? Yeah. Well. I will be offering some things. I'm taking a break for July. Okay. Um, but yes, I support people in one-on-one sessions. So you can find me on Instagram. It's Nia Sip. And we can do one-on-one support sessions. And then I will be offering a sip and paint in August. So where we will meditate and stay in silence and create a piece of artwork. Um, the intention for that is once we come out of meditation, we step out and we create our lives. Nice. You know, we create our experiences. And so um, creating a piece of artwork without any agenda or goal or something to copy, just what comes from your spirit, just hold that intention mm-hmm. of bringing creativity out of your spirit when we come out of meditation. So I'll be offering sip and paint in person and um, on online Okay, for people coming in August. Yeah, and those are my current offerings. Nice, nice, nice. So I'll definitely uh, put your information in the show notes so people can follow you and get in contact with you to learn more about what you do, your services, and how to yeah. sip properly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joelle. Well, Thank I really you. Appreciate it. I appreciate you as well, and I would love for you to come back on and uh, you know let's do a meditation together. You know, if it you know for whatever amount of time it may take, you know, I would love to uh, do a, a meditation with you on uh, the podcast and, and and let the people sit in and sip uh, while we do that. I would love that. We can maybe do it like a Zoom style. Yes, absolutely. Let's let's make it happen. I would love to. I really, really appreciate you and what you do. And I thank you for taking the time um, to to conversate and hear me and hear my thoughts. I'm, I'm really humbled and I appreciate it. You're very welcome. I appreciate you more. So I look forward to uh, talking with you and sipping with you soon. Yes. <laughs> Until our next sip. Yes, yes. Peace. Have okay. a great one. Be well. You too. All right. Be well. Hey, guys. I would like to thank you all for joining me on today's show. As I talked with Miss Nia Jarrett of SIP, sit, inhale, and pause. Until next time, enjoy, be well, and continue to make a lifestyle change that lasts. Have a great one, everybody.